Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. Today we're gonna take a look at the future of photography or mirrorless camera. So let's dive right into it. So what is a mirrorless camera? It's a point and shoot camera basically because the point and shoot also does not have a mirror. Now the trick is they wanted you to have interchangeable lenses like a DSLR. That's the crucial point. And it's supposed to be smaller than a DSLR and it's supposed to be better than point and shoot obviously uh, so it's not like you know you're compromising uh, your performance for the size and basically it's supposed to replace the whole thing DSLR basically they want to remove that mirror that goes up and down so how do they achieve it one very simple thing they use smaller sensor now they don't use very small sensor uh, they go smaller than APS-C which is already smaller than full frame Fil full frame being that 35 millimeter film that we are used to all the lenses in the world are uh, Calibrated to that sensor size basically that film size. So that's why we call it full frame anything smaller It will end up with a crop factor. So APS-C is generally what's uh, most common in DSLRs for cheap DSLRs that is and then you have uh, even below that that's called micro four third which are the backbone of this mirrorless system and they remove mirror which I already showed that goes up and down as you can see in this image there is a mirror here now what they are actually gaining by removing the mirror it's called flange distance basically from the last glass element of the lens to the sensor there is a distance now a DSLR has to have a long distance so basically the lens has to project for a longer distance reason for that there has to be a mirror that goes up and down now when you remove that mirror you shrink it close however there is still a mechanical shutter here which acts like this and so if you remove the lens and you see without uh, the shutter shutter is open all the time it generally closes only when you do the exposure and only at photographs it won't do in video so the benefit of that is when you use electronic viewfinder you see what your sensor is seeing so basically all your exposure shading you know whether they're gonna look good or not basically let's say you had ISO that will you know uh, overexpose everything you can see it let's say you had ISO that is too low you will see it let's say uh, shutter rate basically you can see the final image right at the viewfinder this is the like you know uh, basic core factor because while uh, mirror shows what your lens is seeing you do have no idea of knowing like whether the image that you thought you got versus the image your sensor actually got so this is the you know uh, the golden standard for mirrorless camera so with all that idea of grandeur we had a very poor start so reason for that poor start is is um, they said they're gonna have you interchangeable lens system but interchangeable lens requires you to have at least few 10 20 lenses at the beginning there were barely five six so suffice to say there was very severe shortage of lenses on top of that whatever lenses you were getting they were not getting very sharp images simply because of their reliance on on-screen autofocus system which at that time was not uh, refined enough and used contrast based uh, autofocus which was very slow sluggish and missed often so very bad autofocus and the final part that uh, really pissed people off rather than trying it was that it had lower image quality now the reason why it had lower image quality as you can see here we have full frame as you can see APS-C is still very small now micro four third is also smaller than that so image was no way near the ISO setting uh, the you know signal to noise ratio of the sensor was no way near of a normal cheap DSLR and uh, this uh, the clever marketing what they did is they showed you the millimeter rating compensated for the you know sensor and they were like okay with the crop factor they told you okay this is a 300 millimeter full frame lens which will be this big this is your micro four third however what they omitted from that is the aperture setting and people forgot to multiply the crop factor to the aperture consequence of that you could not get shallow depth of field even today you cannot get 1.8 f 1.8 lenses for your micro four third because it has to be become like 0.27 or something like that after the crop factor so suffice to say if you shallow depth of field is like you know your bread and butter you will not get it so that uh, basically trickery people bought it like they thought okay f2.8 lens should give you you know blurry backgrounds did they didn't so on top of that they had ludicrously poor battery life this was uh, 
trying to make it too simple like you know they wanted to make it compact but they compromised on the wrong thing here so this all these things combined almost uh, guaranteed that mirrorless camera will never like you know catch on however some company joined in the race at that time primary being samsung pa samsung panasonic sony and uh, many others like pentax uh, olympus all of them tried and all of them brought their new unique things however with all this uh, things headaches they're supposed to replace dslr but they were not only more expensive they were also poor performing so as you can see it didn't catch on as instantaneously as people expected like you know every uh, at the launch of these things they were like you know mirrorless the future but in reality we're still using dslr these are the reason for that however with all that conflict and uh, challenges few uh, winners came out of now let's talk about panasonic panasonic was the first to market it as like you know world's first uh, mirrorless interchangeable lens camera and they had some well obvious issues obviously but they worked their problem brick by brick they kept building and they had a philosophy of slow and steady improvement so they did not try to like you know go from uh, let's say three to, uh, full hd video to 8k they tried to like you know go to full hd 60 frames per second for uh, then you know full hd 240 frames per second then 4k for 4k 24 frames per second 4k 60 frames per second brick by brick they kept uh, as of now their cameras have the best price to performance in terms of videography features basically they give you full list of pro functions that you can uh, that you supposed to have on a pro camera pro video camera that is used for proper film productions and uh, this may uh, this was all charged by the fact they were using sony image sensor and sony while they also supply some sensors for nikon uh, sony is like quite good at the game so they had a good sensor they completely you know kept working and improving this now they have lens lineup that is actually 20 30 lenses so they were quite uh, you know brick by brick they kept building and as of now as of making this video they are the perfect choice of camera if you want to make a youtube videos vlogging videos they are perfect for it like everything is nailed down from memory size to they also have dual card so in case your one card fails you have second card backup so suffice to say panasonic G, uh, gh5 as of now as of recording this is uh, quite a perfect camera for vlogging not the gs because that does not have in uh, image sensor stabilization which is necessary for vlogging now we come to the big daddy now as i already mentioned sony sensor is like found on almost everything from mobile cameras to panasonic to nikon itself so sony were background quietly they were developing their own camera system before they jumped into the mirrorless system they had their dslr line setup so they already had the lens this is the crucial part so when they came to mirrorless they did not hold back they went full frame now full frame is compulsory if you want to make sure your thing is sold as professional gear it has to be standardized standardized 35 millimeter so and due to the shaved flange distances because lens uh, that is meant for dslr they have much longer throw you can put an adapter and then attach it to your camera and you can still get it to work so that allowed like people can use manual lenses and they already for that camera system that they have released already have a lot of pro lens lined up like already lined up and suffice to say sony uh, while they have lot of uh, issues with their camera specifically overheating and all that they nailed the image quality the image quality of a sony full frame camera is undeniably gorgeous and low light performance is basically uncomparable you can literally see milky way using it and i'm not joking like uh, literally the iso goes up to 500 000 iso so suffice to say the low light performance is mind-boggling and if you want to learn cinematography and like you know this is your passion where you want to make sure your image quality is the final quality that is your like you know final goal to have the best image quality not speed and production ability but the final quality this is undeniable and they made their cameras full frame cameras competitively priced now this is the biggest nail in the coffin for panasonic so panasonic have to make sure they release cheaper cameras now because even though panasonic still has some better some better they are not like day and night difference nowadays sony released uh, 
Sony A7 Mark III, which was a $2,000 camera. Now, $2,000 camera, okay, but that's the same cost of Panasonic GH5. Now, GH5 is a micro fourth. This is a full frame. This is a proper professional sensor. So suffice to say their competitive pricing is really giving them an advantage. Suffice to say, please don't buy older generation Sony's because uh, they still are fixing a lot of bugs. So uh, current latest one will give you a very good performance. You go one back, you will still have the image quality, but the battery life would be very terrible and uh, they don't have touch screen. So suffice to say, Sony still has to iron out a lot of things. And the look and the feel always comes from the lenses. The, it's not a factor of your sensor that's why going for 35 millimeter format is so desirable for everything from Canon Nikon everybody wants to use full frame sensor for this exact reason your lens lineup and that lens will give you that shallow depth of field look that uh, sweeping shots the wide angle lenses and everything combined if you want to make a movie Sony can now give you a very good camera it's not you know the best out there but this is quite good and from price to performance standpoint they destroy everything so you should look out for sony so this was my presentation i hope you guys liked it in that case please uh, leave a like if you didn't dislike leave a comment subscribe i make video every day and as always thanks for watching